I got that heat on the night. There's no air conditioning. Okay? I made sure. So that air you feel should be warm, not cold. <laughs> it should, should be warm. worship service. You made the right choice in being here. I'm so glad you took the time out of your day to come and worship our Lord and Spirit in the truth. Hope you all got your nap. Today I know I did. Just a few announcements. Looks like everybody here was here this morning. Well, my memory is. One thing I want to bring up, if you'll look at our numbers on Sunday mornings, they've been pretty good and pretty steady. If you look over here on the right, on our Wednesday evenings and our Sunday evenings, eh, it's a little bit slim so if you look around and you usually sit next to somebody on sunday morning it's not here on wednesday evening or sunday night tell them they're welcome to come on those nights as well a lot of times we have good lessons on those nights uh the only thing that i really have is i don't want anybody to forget about the serving the church there's open positions if it's assisting a teacher teaching sunday school preparing the lord's supper in the mornings helping out with the bulletins. From what my understanding, uh, Pam is going to try to do the bulletins by herself, but if no one else knows it, how to do it, and if she ends up sick or something else, we could run without bulletins. There's a few in here that overdo it. Some of us don't do enough. Some of us don't do anything. So if you're one of the lower tier, do better. It's okay, you can do it. And Ben's business meeting will be next Sunday afternoon. Right? Okay. And that's really all I have. Uh, and I am glad to see each and every one of you here tonight. Uh, in tonight's worship service, we'll do this off of memory. Brother Dennis will have our lesson and he will serve the table in case I overlook someone. 
Brother Joel will lead us in our song service. I will close this service in prayer, and Brother Dale Maddox will open our service in prayer. So if you would. Bow with me, please. Our kind, loving, heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's day that you've given unto us. We thank you for this time that can be here with our brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> Thank you for each and every day that you give to us. We thank you for the different seasons, the rain, the sunshine, and all the different beauties of thy earth. Thank you for your allowing your son Jesus to come to this earth, live and die as a man, set an example for each and every one of us. And we pray that we will take these examples, we'll try to apply them to our own lives and be as close to him as we can so we may have a home with thee in heaven at the end of our time. Also, I pray at this time that you'll be with all of our number that are shut-ins, be with the ones that take care of them, be with all of our sick, and return them back to our health. Especially pray that you'll be with Deborah as she's had surgery this past week, that you'll be with her as she recovers, and hopefully she can have a speedy recover, <coughs> recovery and return back to her <clears throat> ways that will be comfortable under her where she won't be in so much pain. Also, I pray at this time that you'll be with <clears throat> any of our numbers that are traveling. I pray that you'll keep them safe and return them also back to us. Be with our brother Joel tonight as he leads our singing. I pray we'll all lift up our voices of praise unto you. Thank you for Dennis and Vicky as they work here with us at this congregation. I pray that you'll give them many years of service unto you. Thank you. I pray that you'll be with Dennis as he brings the lesson tonight that each one of us will listen attentively. We'll take these things that he <clears throat> teaches unto us. We'll study them ourselves to, and we'll make sure they apply to our lives and anything where we can apply them to our lives and be stronger Christians and we can teach others I will and we be shining examples in our community. Also I pray at this time that you'll be with one of all of our leaders of our nation. Pray that <clears throat> they'll look unto you for guidance as they want to make laws and do things that it will be pleasing in thy sight. Be with all the ones of our <clears throat> military, all the ones that protect us and that you'll keep them safe also so they can come home and be with their families at the end of their work weeks. I also pray that you'll be with us here in Malden, be with the church the world over. Pray that each and everything we say and do here always will be according to our will. I also pray that you'll be with us, that you'll guard, guide, direct us, and give us all of any sin. For Christ's sake, we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening. Five, five, nine. Five, five, nine. <coughs> Safe in the arms of Jesus. Safe on his gentle breast. Oh, 
when day is turning, hand in hand, red endless bliss. Live for Jesus, live for Jesus, give him all thou hast to give. On the cross the world's encouragement will be six five <laughs> six five before brother Dennis comes speaks to us one one eight one one eight when upon my spells you are tempest tossed when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your many blessings, name what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Yes, is it a different suit? <laughs> I'm sure Katie's got pictures. Philippians chapter 1 is where our lesson will take place this evening. I'd like to start off by reading verse 12, where Paul says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. The glory of God's providences shine in unexpected ways oftentimes. And Paul is a great example of this. The letter that he has written here was written while he was in prison. Now most of us would think that Paul's usefulness would come to an end under these circumstances. But the unexpected glory is that God's providence makes Paul's imprisonment a grand opportunity. As we probably know or have at least heard before, his imprisonment was not the ordinary kind. He wasn't in a jail with other inmates 
Paul was able, at least the first two imprisonments in Rome, to rent his own house. His imprisonment and confinement was that he was to be chained day and night to a soldier of the imperial guard. And you can probably imagine Paul's delight and a revolving opportunity, a rare moment to be able to share the gospel to a captive Caesar's guard. Paul would never have been allowed to assemble them in a worship service. But God's providence allowed him to be chained to them one at a time. And he explains this in verse 13 and 14 of Philippians chapter 1. So that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest of that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Rome at its glory, Rome at its height, there was no earthly kingdom that had the power to penetrate Caesar's household. And yet it was God's providence that allowed the gospel by means of confinement of a Christian. Now, Paul had a choice. Paul could have chosen to sit in silence. He could have dreamed of distant lands needing the gospel. But instead, Paul did what he could where he was at. And our days of confinement are coming. Maybe not in a jail cell. We may be confined to a bed. We may be confined to our homes. No matter what the case, there will still be many to whom we can share the gospel with in our confinement. Paul is telling us that life can be one surprise party after another. But in order for that to happen, we must yield to the opportunities that God has provided and find the glory hidden within our earthly limitations. Paul speaks about his imprisonment in verse 19. And he says, I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. I'm sure Paul understood that his chances of going free were very slim. Paul was not talking about his release from prison, but of the salvation of his soul, his general well-being. God is protecting him because he is such a faithful servant. And he is certain that at that precise moment, while he's sitting there writing this letter, that he is in the exact place that God's will has led him. How poor would we be if we didn't have the... Ephesian letter, or the Philippian letter, or the letter to Colossae, or that of Philemon. All of these were written while he was in prison. Friends, the secret of letting our glory shine through any hardship is to be a user of circumstances rather than being a prisoner of we shouldn't ask, why did this happen? We should ask, what does God expect me to do with these circumstances that may further his kingdom? Verse 23, Paul said, I am hard pressed between two. My desire is to depart. 
to be with Christ, for that is far better. If anyone has ever gone up to Caesar's Head State Park, <clears throat> you follow that little trail, and you can go down between these two splits in the rock. And you get down and you kind of got to turn a little bit sideways to get through. There is no room on either side to get over to allow someone to pass. This is kind of the dilemma that Paul finds himself in. Between a rock and a hard place. He can't turn from one side to the other. So he speaks of the only alternative, death. Now the word that they use here speaks about taking down a tent or lifting an anchor. You see, Paul at any time is ready to pull up stakes. He's ready to go on to the next row. He's ready to lift his anchor and sail for heaven's shore. That's why he says in verse 21, to die is gain. But see, the other side also, he finds fulfillment in living in a world as Christ's servant. Where he continues in verse 21, for me to live is Christ. Paul's glory will shine through in either case because Paul will be satisfied. He has faith enough in God to believe that whatever comes of this imprisonment, that it can be used to further the glory of God. In verse 20, he says, For Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. You see, the focus of Paul's imprisonment is not on Paul himself, but on Christ. That is what he leans to. Now, I'm sure there are moments of despair during that time. It's a perfectly natural human tendency. For the most part, he was doing the best he could with what he had. And this is the kind of faith where we can find glory in unexpected places. You know, there's a lot of ways to judge a man's integrity. And a lot can be known about a person by examining their list of enemies. Now, any mature person will not go around and purposely make enemies for the fun of it. Because there's no virtue in that. And yet, for Christians, for you and I, friendships with certain philosophies and certain practices that cut across the message of scriptures, is where we find our enemies. The people who advocate those behaviors, those philosophies, generally, are what we consider our enemies. You know, it wasn't too long ago where you would have those street corner preachers in downtown Greenville. You don't hear about them much anymore. They made an awful lot of enemies. Now, I don't particularly agree with their approach. And I'm sure they offended a great many people. But you see, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. When, when we voice our opinions to certain things, we create enemies. The world, in and of itself, Hates us. The Bible uses that word enmity a lot. 
Uh, we don't use that word today very often. But it is, by definition, a deep-rooted hatred. Paul spoke about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verses 8 and 9. He said, but I will stay at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a wide door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. You know, the fact is that no normal person enjoys bearing the wrath of anyone. And probably that is what explains our reluctance sometimes to stand up and speak up. And it doesn't matter what it is. The results will always be the same. Anytime we stand and we oppose Satan and his crowd, we can expect trouble. The easiest thing for us to do would be to stick our head in the sand. This allows the kind of peace to prevail. We don't stir up the waters. But it is the peace of a cemetery. If we are to expect progress in holiness and righteousness and spiritual maturity, then we are going to be disrupted. And we are going to rock the boat. You know, just by reading Paul's letters, we can see that he did everything possible to live in harmony with every single one. The one thing Paul never did was compromise his Christian convictions. 1 Corinthians 9, 22, he says that he tried to be all things to all men. But he only went to a certain point, and beyond that, he stood firm. And because of that, he accumulated a very long list of enemies. And he had the bruises to prove it. If enemies are made on the basis of adhering to the demands of the gospel, then they become an evidence of God's approval. Verse 28 of Philippians 1, Paul writes here about these enemies. And not frightened in anything by your opponents, this is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that of God. Now, it was Robert Louis Stevenson that wrote that when some people portray St. George in fighting the dragon, says they make no attempt to slay him but tie a pink ribbon around his neck and say, nice kitty, and then give him a saucer of milk. Robert Louis Stevenson says that our warfare against evil must be more deadly. There is such a thing as being rich in enemies. As Christians, we're going to encounter difficulties. And it was Paul who writes in verse 29, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. When Jesus and Paul met that road to Damascus, Jesus told Paul that he was going to suffer much for the cause of Christ. And Paul suffered. The suffering Christ had suffered on our behalf made God's glory available to us. And our suffering points others to that same glory. Now Peter wrote, writes in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes to you, as though something strange is happening to you, but rejoice inasmuch as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Many years ago, prior to World War II, there were a group of missionaries 
that had gone into uh, the Walamo area of Ethiopia. Uh, this was a tribal area. And uh, these people, for the most part in that area, were not overly friendly. But yet they made inroads in evangelizing the natives there. After a while, they were able to translate the book of Mark and several other New Testament passages in the native language. But then in 1937, Italy invaded Ethiopia. And in the face of the advancing army, Mussolini had all of those missionaries evacuated by force. What was left behind at that time was 18 believing baptized converts and what they had already translated of the Bible, Mark and a couple of passages. These, I guess you could say really immature Christians, were harassed and cruelly persecuted. Many were beaten severely. Some were martyred. Others hid in caves. The neighboring tribes would persecute them as well as the army. But in 1942, when this area was freed from Italy and Germany, and they were pushed out, the missionaries were able to return. It was their fear that they were going to have to start from scratch, that there would be none left. But instead of finding 18, they found 10,000. God, in his providence, has chosen to give us our final reward beyond fear. The greatest enemy of mortal man is death. But that door of death becomes a Christian's final doorway to God's glory. And this glory is momentarily broken through during difficult times. Someday, someday, dawn is going to come upon us in all its radiant fullness in the most unexpected ways. Well, maybe even today, in some way, shape, or form, the life that we had been living had changed a bit. A new mission has come up. The transition is hard and difficult, and yet we plow on through. Maybe at some point or another, we can return to what is comfortable. I'm sure Paul was looking forward to being able to leave his prison, to be released by Caesar, to continue on. Paul's desire, Paul's dream was to go to Spain, and that never happened. But what did happen was the gospel being spread through the palace guards, the elite of the elite, Caesar's army, and it would continue to spread. The Bible says, Philippians 1 and verse 6, that I am sure of this, that who, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. The day of Christ. And that is the day, hopefully, that all of us are looking for. But in the meantime, we need to take a look and grab hold of God's unexpected providences in our lives. Make the most of them. Don't resist them. 
of push through. If there is anyone here this evening that is in need of obeying the gospel and becoming a child of God, we want to give you that opportunity. For the Bible tells us that we must repent, that we must confess Christ, because if we confess him before men, he will confess us before his Father in heaven. And the Bible also tells us that we are to be buried in baptism, to put on Christ, to be washed in the waters of baptism, have our sins washed away. And if we are a child of God and we find these difficulties and we just need prayers for help and assistance and for encouragement, we ask that you come. Together we stand and we sing. <coughs> Behold a stranger at the door, he gently knocks and has knocked before, has waited long, is waiting still, you Appreciate everyone being here tonight. Does anybody have anything that we need to add either to the announcements or whatever before we dismiss? Very well. This time we'll be dismissed with prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we come in prayer this evening at the end of this worship service, thanking you once again, Lord, for this beautiful day you've given us to assemble here to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, to sing songs of praises unto thee gather around the table for memorial service to remember Jesus and the sacrifice he gave us and to open and hear another portion of your true and divine word. We pray, Father, as we have heard these lessons that we will take what we need and apply them to our lives and that we will continue to go out and proclaim your word, that we will continue to let our light shine and love thy neighbor as ourselves. We are thankful, Father, for each and every one who has come out for these worship services today, and we pray for your blessings on each and every one of them. And we do lift up our number, Father, of those of our number who are not here tonight, those that are sick, those who are traveling. Father, we just pray that they would continue to look to your word for the knowledge and comfort that they need to continue on their daily walk. And dear Lord, as we prepare to leave this place of worship, we just pray, Father, that we continue to study to show ourselves approved that we continue to try to walk that faithful walk. 
that we will continue to strive for that home in heaven one day. Forgive us, Father, we fall short. Bring us back to the next point of time. And this is in Christ's loving name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.